And uh, as you can see here, it's um, it, it came out pretty well for a large assembly like that. I mean, quick time. And of course, I can again switch to deformations or, or uh, uh, stresses. You know, I can do the same probes at specific areas of interest, or maybe I might just say, okay, that's the only thing I want to isolate that guy and just look at that component alone. You know, you're able to do all that. So, so again, from an assembly or a complexity standpoint, you know, uh, when they're all bonded and you just want to have some overall direction as to are you going the right direction to design, what are my stresses, deflection, it's, it's kind of useful in that, well, that way, right? So that's just to give you a um, couple of examples um, in there, right? Now, uh, getting back to my uh, presentation here, they also allow uh, in pre simulation live thermal, modal, and fluid flow, right? Um, so, for example, when I say uh, modal analysis, I might be interested in, uh, for example, let me just show you a quick one on a, on a, on a modal. I might be interested in this, in this valve cover uh, design here, right? Um, this is probably going to fit onto a, an assembly that's having its own vibration uh, characteristics, and they're asking me to get the natural frequency of these and the different mode shapes. That's the intent here, and I'm still thinking, should I be using uh, aluminum? Should I be using a different material? So apart from dimensional or geometry changes, I'd also like to change the properties and see the effect of that on the analysis, right? So again, I go to my life simulation, and I'm able to go and say, let's just do a model. So far, I did all the structural. I'm going to do a model uh, simulation here. And the modal simulation, you're not applying any load, right? You're just getting the natural frequencies in the mode shapes. And I'm going to just say, let's fix this guy, right? I fixed that surface in there. And I'm going to go to my materials. And I already have, you know, ABS and aluminum 2014. And let's just say I want to set that as my, um, I've assigned aluminum right now. And I'm going to just say, um, just hit the, the play button or, or the show me the results button there. And it's working on it, you know. So there it is, right? It's uh, it's it's still doing its uh, modes, as you can see. If I, if I can zoom in here, 947. It's gonna. I gotta allow it to sit, sit there for a little bit for it to kind of, um, you know, um, settle down there on the results as it's changing in there, right? It's um, it's uh, it's it's 912. That's where it's thinking the mode one is. It gives you the six modes, right? Mode one, mode two, mode three. You can look at the mode shapes. Uh, also, right? You can look at the. the different mode shapes if you want. Um, now I'm going to go back to mode one. That's where I'm in. I, I can look at, uh, let's see here, uh, mode six, right? Um, and, and look at the shape two. Or I could simply go into uh, my little uh, simulation report. And I just clicked on this simulation report. And it's giving me uh, a picture, uh, obviously, of the analysis. Uh, this is something I can export. There it is, right, the different frequencies when I use it, I mean, aluminum as a material right there, that's the frequency I'm getting. Now, what happens if I go switch it to ABS and I'd like to know the natural frequency in there. So again, you see it goes back to blue. That means it's, it's redoing its calculation and I can hear my computer right now. The fan is spinning in there, the GPU. If you, if you look at my um, task manager, just to kind of give you an idea what's going on, um, Right there, my, there's my Creo 7, right? You can see uh, it's kind of using those, uh, look at the GPU uh, of my graphics card, right? It's kind of using that, um, you know, uh, okay? So again, if you look at the, the modes, mode one through mode six, you know, it's a different frequent, you know, you can look at that and you can again say, okay, let's take a snapshot. No files are being created, you know, pretty much. This is something that you're not creating any additional files you have to manage. Each time you just say show or play results, that's pretty much it. And, and the same thing with the, with, the, with the thermal analysis, you could do the same thing, right? So if I go into uh, one of my um, PCB uh, assemblies in here, for example, better this, um, if I go to live simulation, already, you know, there's this heat shield, uh, there's a few chips and a few components in here that are, you know, that have some heat loads and I'm interested in knowing the temperature distribution, obviously, right? So pretty straightforward, you assign the heat loss to convection and the heat flow or the heat flux, right? And the prescribed temperature, right? Pretty straightforward. Um, and if I go, let's say, I want to already apply a couple of loads in here, right? Different loads, maybe we'll just assign a, a heat load in here. We'll just give it a, a specific value um, for the heat load. Maybe also we want to make sure that uh, these geometries uh, have some convection boundary conditions. I'm going to go to my convection boundary condition and maybe we'll just um, 
select some of the surfaces in here, including this guy here. And I'm going to get applying and I'm not doing a fluid flow here per se, um, but I'm just applying an empirical value for the uh, heat transfer coefficient, correct? And then let's give it an ambient temperature in here. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it, right? So having done those, I just say play, and then it's going to give me the temperature distribution on this assembly there. So it's, again, really quick feedback. The instantaneous feedback is the main, main thing that I like about Creo. Um, live, simulation live, right? The instant feedback and, you know, before doing, it, it could be helpful for both analysts and designers. For analysts, before they do a higher fidelity, longer run with, it's gonna take a couple of hours or so, at least, you know, the number of iterations initially, am I going in the right direction? What can I expect? That type of a, um, you know, a result is what I'm looking for real quick. And, and this is where I might again go and say, okay, these fins, what happens if I go to those, uh, uh, same thing that we did with the, with the structural side, right? I could say, okay, what happens if I use a straight uh, shape instead of that one, right? I want to um, regenerate that and build that um, update or change my results, right? Um, if I, or maybe I might go into uh, live simulation um, or uh, like if I could even activate my Creo model here and say, you know, I don't know, this might be an imported model or a Creo model, it doesn't matter. I might just say, okay, um, that guy right here, maybe I want to just do a quick move or an offset or a, make it longer, right? So there, so that will help reduce the temperature maybe for the for the for the for the, the heat sink in there, right? Um, so like these, you know, once I'm done with this, I'm I'm getting back to create. Uh, I'm really not even switching applications or tabs. You see me that right instead of Creo, I'm just enabling that just to give me some direction as to am I going uh, in the right direction for my. Um, goal here, the temperature should be below certain value or maybe that increased, whoops, I got it, we'll change it. That type of, um, you know, analysis is what you get um, out of uh, Creo simulation live, right? So that's, uh, so that's what we've seen. And um, one other thing that you could do is uh, with inside of Creo simulation live is also fluids, all right? That's also quite uh, uh, quick, you know, it gives you like immediate feedback um, if you're planning to do any type of fluid flow analysis, you could do that too. Um, now, one, one thing it's important to note, like I was telling, is the hardware check, right? You have to do, uh, if you go to ptc.com and there's a hardware check utility, right? I have it open already here. Whether you're using Creo 4, um, 120 and prior, or 130 or higher, or Creo 6 or 7, you have two different hardware checks. And when you do that, it'll, it'll kind of check your, uh, you know, your computer and see if, if it's compatible. So, for example, if I were to just escape out of here, I just go, I have an NVIDIA graphics card. I go to my NVIDIA control panel here, and I should be able to, uh, once it comes up, I go to my system information, uh, and it should tell me, like, you know, the, the main thing is that the video RAM in here, right? You see the system uh, dedicated video uh, memory right here. It's about 4 gig. Um, you know, PTC recommends 8 gig, and 4 gig is a minimum, so... Uh, so that's just to give you an idea uh, on on uh, on the graphics card requirements there. Now, one other thing um, is uh, just some of the commonly used, um, you know, NVIDIA CUDA based uh, uh, graphics cards are supported, right? They're all uh, in the PTC side. You can you can look it up uh, on the support pages that you have. But that's just um, so that's just the initial uh, the, the first product, and and now let's take a, a quick look at the. New Creo ANSYS simulation, right? So, so whatever I showed you so far, very much for the designer that wants some quick feedback. And, and, and you're looking at all the demos that I showed and say, okay, that's all good, but what about the mesh refinement? You know, I'm someone that has used FEA in the past. I may have even used some ANSYS tools like ANSYS Mechanical, and now I'd like to go a little more deeper, right? Um, you know, nice to have that, that initial feedback really quickly, in, literally in seconds, but now I'd like to have a little more of a final validation check wherein PTC is uh, kind of using, again, ANSYS for that. It's a Creo called Creo ANSYS simulation, right? And it has um, a much more of a, a, you know, the mechanical solver is technically what is working behind the scenes there. And this is going to be continued to be developed by PTC moving forward, but it, it, um, it has a lot more um, options than with Creo um, uh, Simulation Live, I'd say, right? I mean, you got your constraints, 
Um, you got your uh, support, frictionless support too, right? Planar cylindrical ball, different types of constraints that you can do. Uh, your uh, thermal boundary conditions uh, like radiation convection, um, you know, those prescribed temperature, those are there. But the key is it has what ANSYS calls physics aware meshing built in. So depending on the physics you choose, right? Whether it's thermal, um, whether it's gonna be structural or modal, depending on that, it understands to give you the, the, the meshing accordingly, right? I mean, whether it's gonna be hexahedrons or tetrahedrons, you're able to have much more control on that, like in much in, in around fillets or when the curvature becomes higher, I'd like to have a finer mesh in those regions. So you got it, this is like much more of a full blown um, FEA solution that some of the analysts may be familiar with. At the same time, it's kind of easy to use for a designer or the engineer, right? So um, it has idealizations like, you know, as many of you may have known, idealizations are mathematical approximations, right? I could have a really huge large engine assembly and I can just, um, you know, um, simply assume that as a point in my overall design and give it a weight and then see what is the effect of that weight on the rest of the design. I don't have to have the entire CAD model, right? That's idealizations, like beam idealization, springs, uh, shell idealization. So they do support some of those and there's gonna be some improvements in Creo 8 and 9 and 10 moving forward in these areas, but uh, it also has uh, connections, uh, bonded uh, connections, what type of connections you want. Nonlinear contact not yet supported, maybe in the next release, but you know, it's still uh, the joints are very useful. Uh, instead of Creo Simulate, uh, I, I used to use uh, weighted links or rigid links or spring elements to kind of have that kind of a behavior to, to enable or disable certain degrees of freedom. And you could just use joints, which uh, it's a much, much better method uh, to, to uh, mimic certain behaviors, especially in assembly mode, right? Um, and the results in there, which this can leverage GPU. So this doesn't have a GPU requirement. You can just use your regular RAM, CPU, Four cores, right? That, that's kind of what it what it uses there. So, okay. So let me uh, let's take a quick look at uh, at that too. Now, um, let's see here. Um, we'll do a quick time check. So before I get into the Creo Ansys simulation, one thing uh, one thing I, I did not um, show when I was showing the Creo simulation live as a as a fluid example. So I could go in that same live simulation. Uh, we we showed you structured thermal and model, and I could do a fluid study wherein I have a thermal mixture scenario here. And, 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 and most of the time in a fluid flow software, one of the biggest things is to get the fluid domain, right? Okay, so how do I get that is that's automated inside of CSL, right? So all I do is I already have a domain that I created it and I could use it, but here I'm gonna go internal uh, volume. It can also be external, right? And I just use the seed and boundary method selection in Creo behind the scenes. That's what it's using, as you can see. As soon as I pick these three surfaces, it understood to pick those internal surfaces in there, and it has created the, the fluid volume for me. So if you look at my, you know, in Creo 7, we, we support the body concept in here. If I hide the main body, there is my fluid body. Pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. It's already built in there. Now I can just go assign maybe, um, let's say a velocity in here, right? I'm gonna go and say, okay, I wanna assign, uh, let's see here, we'll just give it a, um, uh, a specific velocity. Let's see here, uh, about five meter per second. I'm gonna assign a, a velocity here. We'll just give it a, the y direction, we'll give it a negative 15 meter per second right in there. And um, in, in all, um, fluid flow problems you would have seen, you know, when we know this is going to be atmospheric pressure, you just, it's gauge pressure is what we apply, right? So out the pressure, just give it zero pascals. Does that mean, I mean, as you all know, the difference between gauge pressure, absolute pressure, and the atmospheric pressure, the atmosphere, it's just atmospheric pressure. That's why I'm giving zero for the gauge pressure right there. And now I should be able to just, just go into my uh, fluid in here and say apply material, right? It could be air, water, engine oil, what have you. I'm just gonna give it a water right in there. We'll just assign water and it has all the properties, right? Like your viscosity and uh, your density, you know, coefficient of thermal expansion, specific heat capacity, things like that. Um, that's built in, right? You can also create your own material, uh, fluid material, I should say. Um, and that's it. Or, or I, could, I could say, let's apply also a temperature, right? Let's say it's gonna be hot and cold and you know, what have you. So, Maybe I'm gonna assign a, a specific temperature here for this. We'll just say it's gonna be in uh, so 
you know, maybe we'll just give it a 40 degrees Celsius there, and then you'll uh, probably assign a temperature for this surface too. Uh, we'll set it to uh, 120, maybe. Um, and, and then I hit the little uh, play button in there. And what the system is doing right now is, is giving me literally again, the fluid flow instantaneously, right? Again, it's using that same kind of GPU um, based technology that's working. I'm still in Creo uh, simulation live, as you can see here, right? That's what it's still, uh, in, you know, giving me. I could look at the, right now I'm looking at the velocity. I could look at temperature, pressure, right? Um, I could look at the, the, the cut plane um, right in there, right? I could, uh, I could say maybe I want to look at the direction field, right? Uh, maybe particles, uh, streamlines, what have you, right? So those are just, just um, uh, you know, and by the way, this is uh, a transient uh, one in there, right? You can see it's, it's uh, you can see the time uh, in there, right? Um, I could also have it show the, the temperature, for example, right in there, right? It's, it's you know, giving me um, the, the temperature. I'm just allowing it to, if I go to my cat plane in there, there it is, right? It's still allowing it, to, it's still working on it. And if you look at it, uh, I can assign a time limit in there. I can do my little uh, simulation probes and say, okay, what about the temperature in there? And look at the graph and you know, just you could see that it's being a, a transient um, uh, steady state is available. Uh, probably started starting Creo 8.0, but right now it's still transient. You can set up a limit for the time, but I, I get an idea of the temperature change on that point that I've picked uh, using the graph in here. So. So it's available. Uh, I mean, it's um, it, it gives you both fluid, uh, structural, thermal, all in quick time. That's the key, here, right? So, um, and then it can also do like, um, for example, if I have to open up a external flow, right? You know, that's also pretty. It's nothing complicated um, for somebody who may not have ever done. I myself, I have a more background on the structural side than thermal or even um, fluid flow. But you could see that for somebody like myself or many of you who may not have done, used even a higher end uh, um, CFD tool, it's pretty straightforward to set it up and, and, and the quick feedback that you're getting in here, right? I do a fluid flow simulation and this I know is an external volume, enclosure volume. So I go to the, and they have it built in, right? You can see how I'm just, it's almost like in your workpiece and CNC when you do in pro manufacturing, it's very similar to that, right? I just, there it goes, right? I, I just have some, uh, uh, I drag those to create my fluid volume, right? And then I'm going to say, okay, there's my velocity. We'll just go, I uh, want to assign um, velocity of, uh, let's see here in, in the X direction, maybe term, we'll just give it a 65 cent mile an hour. We'll just give it 30, 30 meter per second right in there. Um, and then we'll also give a uh, slip symmetry because we want to let the software know that these are the surfaces where um, I want the fluid to be flowing along, right? So there's, you know, that's along that geometry. That's where I'm, I'm saying that's the slip symmetry there. And then I'm gonna go give as always the outlet pressure, which is a gauge pressure zero. So that's, you know, that's the volume that I'm, I'm looking at. Um, and now I should be able to go and give it a, a material, right? I just, this is gonna be air this time. Um, and then I hit the, the play button. And it's again, you know, the, the, the quickness with which it is able to run these sort of analysis. This is uh, pretty quick in there. It's taking a little more time in, in, in this particular specific uh, analysis. I could see that, right? But that's the, the, the temperature. And it will also take a look at um, the velocity and, you know, other, other things, you know, you can, you can take a look at it. Probably my thinking, uh, uh, my, probably my GPU is still working on it in there, but yeah, there's, there's, I can, if I could go to velocity and, while it's doing it, there it is, yeah, there it goes. It just took a little, few more seconds in there, right? As you can see here, I'm looking at the velocity and um, I can look at the streamlines this time, maybe without this, I could just show me the, uh, the streamlines. It just takes uh, a little more time in here. It's still uh, thinking about it, as you can see here. Um, and while it's uh, working on that, let me just switch back to my, uh, yeah, there it is, right? Um, just so really, uh, based on what I've shown so far, if you think about uh, the PTC's uh, Creo simulation portfolio, right? You're all familiar with Creo Simulate or Advanced Creo Simulate, used to be called Pro Mechanica. That used to be like two and a half years ago. This is the, uh, this is the thing that we had. It's still there, um, very powerful 
for vibration studies, large deformation and advanced analysis it still continue to be maintained. Um, but then there are additional tools now that we went over, like Creo Simulation Live, mainly focused on this new ANSYS simulation starting 7020, right? And then um, we have a few more uh, additional tools that uh, we'll probably look at in another webinar. But there are some comparison tools with ptc.com if you go and you can see which one, depending on what you're looking to do, right? We still have this old Creo Simulate tools, but then these are the two tools that, that, that I was uh, showing you actually. So if I go back to my uh, Creo, uh, let's see here if I could go. Yeah. One of the thing I wanted to quickly talk about uh, or show actually is if I go to, let me launch a Creo from here. Um, is the comparison, right, between um, um, different, um, you know, and, 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 you know, like when you open up a large assembly like this and remember the time it typically takes to mesh and everything, right? So here are some, some, some comparisons uh, of, you know, of the done using, uh, like, for example, Creo Simulate, the traditional tool it takes three hours versus the time it would take in, in, uh, to give you a quick feedback. I'm talking about simple bonded just pretty straightforward analysis without any advanced contact or things like that. The time it takes uh, in here less than 10 seconds versus three hours. And, and those are uh, some of the big, big uh, advantages of using um, these, uh, this new tool in there. Now, uh, one quick example I wanted to talk through here is really quickly. So if I open up a, a part, uh, I'm gonna open up a part in here real quick and what happens uh, if you need some more higher fidelity uh, results uh, wherein you know, that is good for the for my initial uh, uh, direction, but give me a, a much more uh, you know, robust, uh, I should say, it's using a, a, a mesh based uh, where I can control the mesh and um, you know, I can look at the convergence criteria and, and set up the NR uh, you know, method uh, criteria. In that case, you would, when you go into Creo and when you go to applications, right, you have this new ANSYS uh, simulation that's kind of new in, 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 uh, in Creo um, uh, 7.0, uh, 7.0.2.0, uh, technically the MO20 date code, right, that's when they introduced this. So you go to that one, as you can see, it points to me structure thermal, so I'm going to go structure and there are contacts, you know, if you want to define any bonded contacts, it can detect it. If it's an assembly, it would be helpful too. Uh, or if it's a part with multiple bodies, it can um, you know, capture that too. So here, uh, let's say it looks very similar to what I've shown you so far. However, let's say I wanna go and apply some, some, um, some fixed constraints in here, uh, right? Now I'm gonna just constrain it in here. But the, the good thing about this one is I can just go generate a mesh and this uses the, the mechanical solver. You can even export uh, the analysis to, to ANSYS Mechanical, you had a lot more tools in here. So you could see how I have this process manager that's in progress right now. It's saying that it's still, uh, um, it's just, it's working on it. As you can see, it's, it did the mesh right now. And I could say, show me the mesh. Uh, and there it is, right? And this is where I might go into a little more, uh, I want, want to change the mesh. Right? It's a very, you know, it looks like it's not a, it's a very coarse mesh. And now some of you may not be familiar with, um, you know, what kind of mesh density you should apply for a specific type of analysis based on the aspect ratio that comes with experience. So in that case, you could simply say, okay, low to high, right? You could just say, I want to have, I can just push it all the way down here. And I could say, what happens if I generate the mesh? So you had just two elements in there. Now you will see it's going to be an overall mesh density where it's changing a few parameters in there behind the scenes. And, and then it's going to come up with a much more um, higher density uh, mesh right in here, right, right in there. You can see that, you know, around the, you know, we got, if you remember before there was this, two, you know, lesser elements and you have, that's one option, or you could just go apply, um, you know, if you're a little more uh, familiar with some of the mesh control and some of the other FEA tools that you may have used, I could go say based off curvature, I want to control the angle or based on proximity, right? Um, I want to assign a growth rate for each layer. There's multiple options that, that you can play around with, as you can see here, right? Uh, I could even control the, if I go and say the angle, that's 30 degree angle. Let's say if I should be five degree angle, and it's going to be a, a little more finer mesh around the, um, around the curved regions. So you're able to have a lot more control um, in here, right? That's one advantage. 
but as for running the analysis and everything, it's still the same, right? So if I go back to my um, mesh control and, and just leave it uh, in here, I'm gonna just generate the, the default. So it's just quicker in here. We're running closing on time in here, just to show you once you're, uh, I mean, it does it automatically actually even, you know, when you, when you run the analysis, but uh, I can just go and apply contacts, joins. You have a lot more options in here. And I can just go say, let's just run the analysis, right? Um, I think I apply the load in here. So we'll just uh, start applying it. Um, we'll just say apply uh, the load. We'll just go apply it in the negative uh, direction here. There it is. And um, yeah, it, it's, um, uh, let's see, it's a, yeah, you see that the process is still running in here. If I go open the process manager, it's, uh, it's, it's a one and it shows uh, results and everything. So if I just go and run the, rerun the, the analysis that I've, uh, so here I'm doing your traditional pre-processing, meshing, post-processing type CPU-based FEA. But again, you know, it comes, you get that higher fidelity additional options, right? That's the advantage here. And you don't have to keep waiting while this is doing, you could obviously go work on your design or, you know, it's just a, a, a if you open, if I look at the, the Creo process manager, it's, it's one of those things that's kind of happening uh, in there. It just ran, I think there, and I can go look at, uh, I can activate, uh, as you can see here, I can activate the, uh, the deflection, the stress. Um, I could even create newer results that I might want. I might want to create a new contour plot. Uh, maybe I want to have some advanced results in here where I'm going to go use von Mises stresses and I can update my results in here. So you got a, a little more options uh, compared to that Creo simulation live. Um, so uh, for this, you will need Creo 7 and just the CPU based and GPU will help. If you do have GPU, it'll help you with the reporting. You can see the, the color and the fringe plot, they look very, very similar. So if I go activate that, I'm able to go um, do the animation with the mesh, right? This is where I figure, okay, there are areas where I should be able to, I should be able to go in um, and to have better convergence, maybe refine the mesh, et cetera, right? So that's a uh, much more of a full like, solution there. Um, and when you do uh, assemblies, uh, for example, uh, you might have, if I go back to my uh, presentation here real quick, you might have larger assemblies like this, right? Wherein um, the suspension there, uh, this is a motorcycle, uh, you know, the frame and the, and the back arm assembly there that I have analyzing. This is where I used ANSYS simulation, Creo ANSYS simulation uh, in here because I wanted to have those use of spring elements, the idealizations to 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 to, uh, to mimic the suspension there, and then um, I, I'm able to go and assign a little more of those those contact at least for now the the bonded contact um, and joints behavior is very helpful, right? I can control the degree of freedom uh, for a specific behavior between components, which you would normally do it with a lot of other types of connections. In Creo Simulate, you may use uh, things like um, weighted links, rigid links that I might still used to use during the industry days, but that's uh, it's a lot better there. So that's those are uh, some of the, um, I thought at least uh, at a very high level, uh, I should show you uh, real quick uh, as to what are the um, two new uh, exciting tools inside of uh, uh, Creo um, uh, that we have. Uh, like I said, the, the portfolio that they have, you know, it's still uh, Creo Simulate, Advanced Simulate is still there, but these are the two things that we kind of focused on in here, so. Um, this is Deb, uh, we're down to two minutes. Yeah. Um, oh, I see there's the slide. Um, there were a couple on the chat um, okay. and, it, and um, I'll, I'll be quiet now. Okay, let me see if I can, should I be, I should be able to look at the chat, right? There it is, there you go, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Kirk, uh, you need to identify the material. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, that's Kirk. That's a good point. Oh, so I had assigned in uh, the material uh, in um, Creo, right, in my um, part library. So if you, if you, whenever when you saw me open up that, uh, let me just quickly show that. Yeah, I probably didn't uh, show that one to you. So whenever, uh, whenever I opened uh, any of those uh, parts in here, let's see if I could open up. Uh, there it is. So if I open up that, that part in there, so you just do your regular, uh, you know, right click edit materials. And as you know, starting Creo 4, PTC did um, 
uh, improve the library. It used to be for the last, uh, I'd say 20 plus 24, 25 years, I've always seen PTC had only aluminum 2014, just a few, and I used to customize it during my industry days and having my own material property, but uh, you could use uh, the new Granita based uh, material library. PTC partnered with Granita, right? And then they have a 50 plus materials like first material, steel, HSLA cast. So you just double click into it, bring it into your uh, uh, model, right? And then you're essentially assigning one of them here. So I can just go steel, HSLA, set as master, and then simply run the analysis. So that's, I think that's what you're alluding to, right? Yeah, I probably didn't uh, show you that, but yeah, that's, that is there. Uh, Great, yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. And then Paul, uh, qu the question from Paul is, how does this simulation treat connection? So yeah, that's a, um, that's a very good question. Also by default, right? When I open that uh, large, uh, not very large, but, or, or that, that rear axle assembly, or even, you know, I think this one is what I had shown you initially, that part done and everything. Um, to, you know, the real, you know, if I were to really um, think about this, right? I mean, yeah, the, if I'm gonna assume that these two surfaces are gonna be stuck or glued or bonded or welded, then yes, Creo live simulation could work. But in reality, if you think about it, I might really um, have uh, a faster in here, a preload, and that becomes a lot more a higher end, I would say, contact analysis, which both these um, tools that I showed you do not support as of yet. I think uh, uh, that is more, uh, I would still use Creo Simulate for that. Maybe in Creo Simulation, we might see some nonlinear contact coming up in the future. But right now, yeah, they're all um, uh, just assumed to be uh, uh, bonded, right, in, in, uh, in Creo Simulation Live. Having said that, inside of uh, ANSYS, the Creo ANSYS Simulation, where uh, I open up uh, one of these uh, steering joint assembly that I have here in the run of time, I couldn't show you this one here. So and when I go into this one, and when I say ANSYS simulation here, if you see my, my joints, um, I have joints between these cylinders inside, right? So by the way, just to kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about from here, I do want to control um, um, the behavior of when I apply a torque in here and apply a constraint in here, how is how are these two cylinders going to behave? And so inside of CreoAnsys simulation, you have better options, right, for the joint behavior, right? So I could go to the joint and if I kind of redefine that joint, I can control if it's going to be fixed, it's going to be hinged, translation slot, and I think this is a lot better than your traditional weighted link or rigid link that you would be using to allow like a flexible support kind of a thing, right? So that's, uh, that's there, right? But not in Creo live simulation. Hopefully that answered your question on the connections. Uh, um, yeah, that's all. Yeah, by default they are bonded, you're right. Um, and uh, is there a special Creo license needed for ANSYS simulation? So. So Mike, for, uh, yeah, so um, just, I don't think I had the, the licensing in there, right? So if you look at, the, let me uh, open up here and I'll kind of show you. So two tools we talked about, right? This, this Creo simulation live uh, is one thing, you know, the, the GPU based, you know, quick feedback directional tool that I was talking about, we call it CSL or Creo simulation live. That's also ANSYS based and that has um, a Creo simulation live license or a Creo Simulation Live Plus license. The Live license just gives you structural thermal model and the Plus gives you fluid flow too. Remember I was showing you that on, on the truck and, and, and the, thermal, the internal study. So, so there's, that's, uh, yeah, if you, there's a Plus license giving all four or this license, but yeah. There's a, a trial if you have Creo 4, MO90 and later, I'm, I'm sorry, Creo 5 and later, you will see the trial in there, right? Even though it's technically supported in Creo 4, but you should see when you go to live simulation, you'll see a little uh, uh, like a trial and you can, you can try it out too. Right? So, same thing with ANSYS simulation, right? So for ANSYS simulation, you go to applications, ANSYS simulation order for this. Yes, I do have a license of Creo ANSYS simulation. That's another thing. You need Creo 7020 to make it work in there. So. We should probably have that as uh, as our last uh, question. I've got 104. Um, we are going to tape this, and um, it'll take maybe 
you know, record it in the cloud and maybe it'll take 30 minutes to come back. Um, TriStar probably will put this on their YouTube channel. Do you know, Thiago? Yeah, we can uh, definitely put that across. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check with, um, uh, with um, our, our marketing uh, on that one. Uh, okay. Alex, I'm sure. And if not, you know, there's a, yeah, there are, we do have our webinar recordings. I've done quite a few of these even individually and you can look it up there, but this specific recording, yeah, I'll, I'll probably, if it's available, uh, yeah, we put it in our YouTube channel or it would be in our uh, webinar recordings instead of TriStar, but um, yeah. Um, okay, great. Thanks well, again, Deb. Thank you so much. Thank you, it was really, really a lot of content there. And, and thanks everybody. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Great presentation. Thanks, Kirk. Mm -hmm.